Hi, this is Chris with Stupid Raisins, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to adjust brightness in Final Cut Pro. We got you covered, whether you need to turn down the exposure or increase it and crank that sucker up. Oh gosh, well, turn it down. Now I'm gonna share with you how to correct under or overexposed images and then how we can use video scopes to help us correct exposure. And finally, I'm gonna teach you to be aware of your camera settings that affect exposure. Let's go check that out. All right, so we're gonna be working with brightness today. Uh, but th there's just a couple things I wanna go over uh, and share with you, uh, things that I've been learning over the years, uh, just with just different filming tips of how to keep that exposure from uh, getting to underexposed or overexposed. The way that I like to do it is just taking these uh, step by step, layer by layer. I start with my ISO. Certain cameras work better at different ISOs. Your camera might just look awful after 1600 ISO, no matter what you do. Maybe just keep it in your mind, I'm gonna keep it from 100 to 800 and not go over that. Then from there, I like to match the shutter speed to double the frame rate. So if I'm shooting at 24, I'm gonna double my shutter speed to 48. If I'm shooting at 30, I'm gonna double my shutter speed to 60. That just helps for everything to, to, to just look correct with the shutter speed and not have uh, certain flickers and things going on. I, I, don't, I don't like to touch those after that. And instead, well, what I will adjust from this point on is the f-stop. It basically controls the lens aperture to open and close it to either let in more light or not allow light in. So with f-stop, the higher the number, the less light comes into the lens. The lower the number, the more light. So if you find a lens that's, you know, 2.8 and below on the f-stop, that's a really great low light lens. If you're shooting a lot of events and it's not always well lit, you're gonna wanna have a lens that can reach that low of an f-stop. So, and, and then if after all that, if my f-stop just can't quite handle it, it's all the way down at the lowest, like the lens I have on right now can go as low as 2.8. If that's still not cutting it, I'll go back to my ISO, crank that up a little bit, go to 800, 1600 for the shot that I'm on, then bring that back down. And then after all that, it's still possible for your footage to be underexposed, overexposed, or you to just miss something on your little viewfinder. So you bring your footage into your timeline and you see, okay, this one's a little dark, this one's a little bright, uh, this one is pretty close, pretty solid. So we're gonna be uh, adjusting the exposure. We wanna have the video scopes open. There's also another way to get to that, Command 7. We'll bring those on and off. So the video scopes allows you to see the brightness of the image. So down here at zero, it is the, sh the shadows of the image. Then up here at 100, it is the brightness, and everything in between is just the brightness level between dark and light. So right now, this image is very dim, uh, so you see there's a lot of spots, like right here, you've got this dark area here, that's these spots here. They're way low at the shadows. Uh, if we go to another image, you can see how it kind of flattens off like a, like a flat top. Those uh, parts of the image have completely lost data. A lot of these spots, like right here on my cheek, it's a really shiny spot of my face. No need to fear, we can still make some adjustments to make this usable. This third example, we've got a lot more balanced. There's a couple spots that may be getting a little bright, perhaps my nose and my cheek again, just like, you know, the highlights of my face. And if we scroll across, you'll actually kind of see my head kind of nods and moves, but just about right here in the image. So pretty cool, that's how those Luma waveforms work. So we're gonna be monitoring that as we go through this process. All right, we're gonna go back to the color inspector. We're gonna hit command six. That's a shortcut to bring that guy up. So we're gonna go up here to the no corrections. There's a little arrow next to it that allows us to add a correction. We're gonna start with color board. Now we're currently in saturation, which controls the amount of color, and then color, this changes uh, tone, tint, and all that. But we wanna focus on, we're focusing on brightness or exposure today. Here, what you'll see is we've got a couple different sliders. So this one controls the global, which includes everything across the board. It either makes it all brighter or all darker. The next up is the shadows. So the shadows you'll see at the bottom of the, the waveform, you'll see them rise as we bring this up. And this right here is the highlights, which controls all the brighter points of the image, the highlighted points of the image versus the shadows. 
Ah, that's better. You know, we share new videos like this all the time to help with your Final Cut Pro projects. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you can get notified when we release our next video. So in this case, we're, we are gonna go ahead and start with shadows, then go to highlights, and then end at midtones. So the shadows right here for this image, that's a little dark. We actually wanna try to bring a little bit in from the background. So I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit, leave that right here about 8%. Then from there, I'm gonna go to the brightness, and I think that looks pretty good. Now midtones is where things can get a little interesting. But the main key that the midtones do is, is it kind of shifts the contrast. My personal taste, I would like this to be down a little bit. So a lot of this is just tweaking, adjusting as you go. The shadows first. So let's go to the highlights, bring those down to something that's a little more reasonable. We'll bring it down there and then we'll bring down the midtones, which while bringing that down, we're seeing, hey, we gotta bring those highlights back up. I think that's creating a pretty good contrast. Now, of course, with both of these images, we have a lot of work to do still with coloring and saturation and all that. All right, so we're gonna check out this last clip and with this one, we're gonna do it a little differently. I'm gonna introduce you to the color wheels. What Final Cut has done with the color wheels, it, they, they have taken the same menu we were just in and they have put it in these wheels. So we have the exposure right here for the global. We've got the exposure here for the shadows, the highlights, midtones. And then on the left side, we have the saturation. Uh, and then in the middle of all these is the color. So I'm gonna take a moment to adjust this one a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so a few more notes. Uh, if you find that you're just stuck, like let's say that we still had some spots in this image that were a little bright and we just need, we feel like we just need a little bit more color, a little more information to work with. What we can do is we can open up our browser, come over here to our library and click on modify in the inspector window. Here we can change the color processing setting for the library. Uh, let me just read this real quick. Uh, the, this setting changes the working color space and processing for effects, including built-in camera LUT conversions for log media, and may affect the appearance of all projects and media in the library. You wanna be careful with this step because it could just create more work for you. But if you're really having a tough time and you wanna to try to see if that wide gamut HDR is going to give you more information in your images to uh, process some changes and correct the color, we can go to select that and come back in here and make some more adjustments. As you can see, we can already we can already see a little bit of a difference. Like even when we brought it in, feels like we have a little bit more diversity of color. Like there, like there's more of a range. So we took a look at color boards, color wheels, and ways that we can adjust exposure. We even talked about some filming techniques for you to try the next time you're out shooting. And with that, we've reached the end. Thanks for tagging along. You, my friend, are ready to shine. Now that you've learned how to adjust brightness in Final Cut Pro, I've made another video about how to do slow motion in Final Cut Pro. Click here to check it out.